You mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand-up for 15 years now? Man, let me tell you something. I was on vacation with Sam one time, Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. We was in Portofino, we had finished dinner one time. We walking back to go get on this boat. Hey, you're Samuel Jackson, I wanna take a picture. He said, what's the magic word, mother so, Cat Williams just went nuclear on everyone, especially Steve Harvey. He's not pulling any punches, dropping bombs left and right. Forget about Steve's iconic stash or Samuel's killer comedic timing. Cat's saying Steve's success ain't as clean as it seems. The Hollywood scene is buzzing with drama, and it's all about Samuel L. Jackson and Steve Harvey. You'd think these two heavy hitters would be tight, right? Wrong. There's some serious tension brewing between them. The big question on everyone's lips, what exactly is Steve Harvey hiding that's got Samuel Jackson ready to throw down? So, Cat's diving into the beef between Steve and Bernie Mac, claiming Steve was dissing Bernie behind the scenes, thinking he deserved the spotlight more. So yeah, Hollywood's not all glitz and glam. There's some serious drama brewing, and Kat's not holding back on calling it out. So Samuel's known for cracking a joke or two, but this time it's all business. Rumor has it there might be some hidden secrets lurking in Steve's closet, and Samuel's itching to bring them to light. But you know Steve Harvey, he's not one to take shade lightly. If Samuel goes ahead and spills the beans, we could be in for a Hollywood showdown of epic proportions. We all know Steve Harvey's got that signature comedy flair. Whether he's cracking jokes on his radio show or hosting his daytime talk gig, Dupe's practically a household name by now. But here's the plot twist. Not everyone's hopping on the Steve Harvey hype train. Guess who's not feeling the love? Yep, you guess it, it, our man Samuel L. Jackson. Their beef goes deeper than just surface level gossip. Seems like Samuel L. Jackson isn't totally buying into the Steve Harvey charm, whether it's his onstage persona or his off-screen vibe. We've caught hints of Jackson's feelings over the years, but things really heat it up recently when he spilled the tea about a run-in he had with Harvey a couple of years back. Remember those viral pics of Jackson and his girl hanging with Harvey and his ride or die at that bougie vacation spot? Everybody was thinking that these dudes must be tight. But plot twist, Samuel decided it was time to spill the tea. Turns out that yacht scene, totally unplanned. Steve Harvey, I hear y'all take vacations together on the yacht or something. Well, we get on the boat with Magic and Cookie. Steve and Marjorie have their own boat. So that means y'all got room uh, for we, me on that other one boat. One year, one year, we got a boat. Latanya and I got a boat. Cookie and Irvin had their boat. Steve had their boat. And that was this dope ass picture that we took of all three yachts with a drone going together. You see that? That's some boat in stuff a row. right there. So wow. It was like a, you know, it was a big rich black folk picture. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so dope. Man, that yeah. sound amazing. It was, it was amazing, but yeah, but we run into each other out there, but now... According to Jackson, he and his girl were just cruising to their vacay spot when they randomly bumped into Harvey and his boo. And let me tell you, Jackson's expression was priceless as he dropped the bomb. This meetup with Steve? Pure coincidence, no Hollywood drama involved. So why is Samuel L. Jackson not exactly vibing with Harvey? Well, it seems like their dynamic might trace back to Jackson's bond with Bernie Mac. And guess who was Bernie's wingman? Yep, you guessed it, Steve Harvey. If you haven't been following Bernie Mac, let me tell you, it's a wild ride. Dude would straight up roast the crowd, leaving everyone in stitches. Back when these two were in the same comedy crew, Harvey seemed dead set on putting Bernie Mac on the sidelines. Pretty messed up, right? I mean, they were supposed to be a squad chasing success together. Word on the street is, Harvey's been self-centered since day one, and this ain't just recent gossip. Word on the street is, behind the scenes, Harvey wasn't exactly playing nice, and he was always trying to steal Bernie Mac's spotlight. Flashback to the early 2000s, you remember the original Kings of Comedy show, right? Harvey, alongside D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac formed the dream team of comedy. They hit the road, smashed records, and made bank, leaving a serious mark on the comedy game. Harvey, with his slick moves and in-your-face banter, was seen as the smooth operator of the original kings of comedy. On the other hand, Bernie Mac's style was more like a comedic roller coaster, diving deep into real-life issues with intense jokes. Now, rumor has it that Harvey might have been a tad jealous of Bernie's unique vibe, and what started as a minor issue quickly spiraled into a full-blown feud. It seems like those whispers about Harvey and Bernie Mac not exactly being best during the Kings of Comedy tour might actually have some truth to them. Cedric recently spilled all the deets on Shannon Sharp's podcast, revealing that the feud between Harvey and Bernie was more than just backstage gossip. It had real consequences, like stopping the Kings of Comedy crew from going on another tour. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, they were the kind of guys that they both alpha males, you know, like they, they both, you know, they just saw it different, you know right. what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they was able to get through it. You guys, is that one of the reasons why you didn't do 
you did it. You did the first. You did the first part. I, the second part. I, I don't think. I think you know, of course like that was you know definitely a contributing circumstance. But I also think that it had a lot to do with the the promoter on the thing because he got a bigger head than all of us. Right. So the dude that put his put us all together started to really think it was about him. Yeah. You know, so it started to be that. So it was a lot of those kind of elements in there where people just- Sometimes like, people just ruined it good. Back in 2003, Bernie Mac dropped some truth bombs in an interview with GQ magazine, claiming that Harvey was straight up jealous and tried to mess with his movie gigs. Of course, Steve couldn't just let that slide. And in a 2010 interview, he opened up about how Bernie's words hurt him. But here's the kicker. Fans weren't entirely buying Steve's side of the story. Now, when you consider Samuel L. Jackson and Bernie Mac's tight bond, it's easy to see why Jackson might not be sending Steve Harvey any holiday cheer. These dudes weren't just pals, they were practically family in the industry. So while you might remember them as bandmates on a wild journey to honor their lead singer, what you might not know is just how deep Samuel Jackson and Bernie Mac's bond really ran. In Soul Men, Jackson and Mac played characters who used to rock out together, embarking on a wild road trip to pay tribute to their late frontman. Sadly, Bernie Mac fell ill and passed from pneumonia in August after they wrapped filming. Bernie Mac wasn't your average comedian, he was like the boss of comedy known for The Bernie Mac Show and the epic Kings of Comedy Tour, even made into a movie by Spike Lee. But his road to fame wasn't smooth. Losing his mom early on hit him hard, pushing him through rough jobs just to get by. But Bernie found his silver lining, laughter. He dove into stand-up comedy, determined to spread joy. His legacy? More than just jokes on screen, it's about bouncing back from life's punches, turning struggles into comedy gold. Bernie's mantra, be the best, stay true to yourself. He didn't care about fame or outdoing others. Bernie just wanted to make make everyone laugh wherever they were from, and he didn't chase money. Good work brings its own rewards, he believed. Bernie's passion for comedy was next level. For him, it wasn't about the money, it was about honing his craft. According to Bernie, if you're good at what you do, the money's gonna come naturally, no need to chase it. Now, some people couldn't help but see this as a bit of a jab at Steve Harvey. But hold up, there's more to the tale. You see, Steve's all about that money talk. In an interview, he casually mentioned pulling in around $10 million a year from radio and brushed it off as just a little bit of money. Yep, you heard that right. $10 million just a smidge, according to Steve. This difference in money mindset says a lot about how these two see the world. But for Steve, it's not just about the cash. His life's been a roller coaster of controversies beyond the cash. Despite his public image as the family man, the funny guy, the charming actor, and the TV host, Steve Harvey's personal journey's been full of plot twists, just like one of his own shows. Accusations have been swirling around, from Steve Harvey being tagged as a less-than-stellar host to allegations of mistreating his former wife and kids. So here's the food for thought. If Steve Harvey is the poster boy for family values, why is he walking down the aisle multiple times? Lately, there's been chatter about Steve having a wandering eye, putting his past marriages under the microscope. Recently, an activist named Essie Berry stepped up, dropping some bombshell accusations about Stevie Harvey, and it seems like those words might have put a dent in Harvey's squeaky clean image. But wait, there's more. Turns out, while Stevie Harvey might be the king of comedy, he's also conquered Hollywood as an actor, producer, and writer. But his climb to success wasn't all smooth sailing. Behind that grin is a guy who had to hustle hard to get where he is today. While Steve often spins his ups and downs as valuable life lessons, it seems like the reality might be more complicated. Take his second marriage with Mary Shackelford, for example. Total roller coaster. So, Steve and Mary had a son named Winton, but their love story hit a rough patch in 2005. They went through a messy divorce, and Mary didn't hold back on how quickly Steve moved on to his current wife, Marjorie Harvey. She found it kind of unsettling how fast Steve switched lanes from their marriage to the next one. But here's where it gets spicy. Post-divorce, Mary spilled the tea, alleging that Steve cheated on her with Marjorie toward the end of their marriage. Steve denied it, calling it bogus. But actions speak louder than words. Steve did indeed marry Marjorie not long after splitting from Mary, raising some eyebrows and giving credence to those cheating rumors. And the drama doesn't stop there. Mary accused him not only of playing the field, but also of mistreating their son. According to Mary, after being away for a few days post divorce, she came back to find her son with what looked like bruises on his face. She claimed Steve was behind these injuries, prompting her to take legal action against her ex-husband. Mary didn't hold back, hitting Steve with a whopping $60 million lawsuit. The list of charges was long, including child endangerment, torture, conspiracy against rights, kidnapping, breach of contract, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Steve didn't take it lying down, though. He took Mary to court and
and managed to snag an injunction against her. But here's the twist. The court slapped Mary with a gag order. She was told to keep quiet about the case and not discuss it publicly. Now, that raised some eyebrows. Why the need for secrecy if everything was on the level? To many, this move hinted that Steve might have had a hand in the events Mary was talking about. Post-case, Mary spilled more to a magazine, saying, I didn't violate any court orders. This is about, you're not supposed to be talking to anybody about your divorce. That's what they're saying. I'm like, this is America. The whole drama left a bunch of unanswered questions. Why all the secrecy? Why the legal battle? It started to cast doubt on Steve Harvey's image as the love guru. Some fans began to wonder if maybe Steve's personal life was a bit messier than his advice columns would suggest. Hold up, because it looks like Steve Harvey's not just caught up in drama with Mary, he's also stirring the pot in the world of comedy controversies. You know how comedians treasure their jokes, right? Well, there's an unwritten rule about not poaching material. But guess who's been stirring up some trouble in the comedy scene? Yep, you guessed it. Steve Harvey. Lately, funny man Mark Curry's been causing a stir, calling out Steve for allegedly snagging his material and using it for jokes on his shows. And this ain't a new beef either. Mark's been throwing shade about Steve swiping his jokes way back on Harvey's NBC talk show. And if that wasn't enough, there's a vibe in the comedy world that Steve's got a habit of borrowing a bit too generously from his fellow jokesters. Now here's the kicker. This ain't the first time Steve's comedy practices have raised eyebrows. Rumors even suggest that Samuel L. Jackson might not be Steve's biggest fan, partly because of these alleged joke borrowings. Steve Harvey and Mark Curry? Yeah, they're knee-deep in some serious comedy beef. Mark's laying it out there that Steve, the dude who used to host Little Big Shots on NBC, snagged not one, but two of his jokes. And here's the kicker. Mark claims he already called Steve out on it before, but the alleged joke snatching just kept on happening. I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing with me. He's, well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the, the, the bullshit talk show he had, and he did he he did all my Halloween material one Halloween. I'm watching. Uh, somebody called me, said, "Man, homeboy doing your material." So he did my whole Halloween run, and I know he didn't think of it. You know, this this is true stuff that really happened to me. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so my thing is, you don't have to do that, homeboy. Mm. Right. So you know, motherfucker, you made enough money, bitch ass. You know, <laughs> wow. you made enough money. You did enough. You know what? Why are you on my material? Right. You know, what's that about? Well, it looks like things really heated up between Steve and Mark. Steve straight up denied Mark's claims, saying he couldn't even name the supposedly stolen jokes. He didn't hold back, telling Mark to get a life and a career. Steve went on a tirade, swearing he hadn't stolen a joke in 35 years, and challenged Mark to name the joke he's talking about. He even threw in a grow up man for good measure. But here's the twist. Mark wasn't bluffing. The comedian came prepared, armed with evidence to back up his claims and crank up the heat in this comedy showdown. And here's the kicker of all kickers. Other comedians like Cat Williams jumped into the fray, backing up Mark. But rewind to 2008, when Steve Harvey and Cat Williams were making headlines for all the wrong reasons. These two haven't exactly been buddy-buddy for over a decade, and boy, is there a story behind it. Cat Williams decided to throw some serious shade at Steve right before a Christmas season show, and things went off the rails. Imagine this, Jamie Foxx, then a radio host, stirs the pot by playing a clip of Williams dissing Steve Harvey. Cat on the phone goes on a rant, hinting at some upcoming comedy gig and apologizing in advance for what's about to go down. But then he drops the bomb, telling Steve that once he hits the stage, it's game over for him as the king of comedy. So what does Steve do? He calls in, totally bewildered by the whole mess. A lot of the interviews that's going on in Detroit, and to be honest with you, like I told you on the show, Jamie, I don't really know where it's coming from, because, you know, comedians, I man, I, I don't, you know, man, we don't got beef. No. You know, we are, I ain't got my squad ain't finna whoop your squad ass. You know, Jimmy Mack ain't finna fight, fight Boomerang. You know, man, <laughs> that, that ain't what we do, man. I don't, I don't know where that spirit is coming from. I don't know why. He tells Jamie and the crew that he's always been cool with Cat, even admitting that back in L.A., he didn't even know who Cat Williams was. I've always been cool with Cat. He uh, said in an interview that back in L.A. when I didn't know who he was, I mean, you know, I understand that I didn't know who he was, when I was on the radio in L.A., you know, he hadn't been in any movies or anything. And, you know, the brother was just not that known, but he was talking about me in the club. And I just asked on the radio, whoever Cat Williams is, to call me. But Cat Williams didn't hold back in a recent interview going off on Steve Harvey. According to Cat, Steve's been playing dirty, from stealing jokes to cozying up to Hollywood elites. He's even accusing Steve of swiping show ideas, like straight up raiding Mark Curry's sitcom for material. Cat straight up called Steve out for supposedly being jealous of Bernie Mac, spilling all the tea on their years-long beef. According to Cat, Bernie felt Steve was trying to mess with his movie roles, even trying to snag a role in Ocean's 
2011, stirring up major tension. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good or bookaby and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have a range. Kat kept going, claiming that Steve, in an appearance on Club Shay, tried to act all laid back about not wanting to be a movie star. I felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. I never, I always knew. Yeah, I, want, I, I was gonna ask you that. Because no. you, you kind of like stayed in your lane. You see Sid branched off, Bernie did, did movies. You kind of stayed, I mean, you had, you had a couple of roles, but that didn't seem to be, that didn't seem to be your passion. That didn't seem to be where you wanted to go. Never read for a movie, man. Didn't care nothing about it. I was a TV star. But according to Kat, Steve was secretly trying to outshine Bernie Mac and snatch up movie roles. Kat didn't hold back, diving deep into Steve's marital history, claiming Steve switched up his story about which wife played a crucial role in his success, shifting credit from one to another. They just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? <laughs> he even spilled that he was offered a spot as the fourth king of comedy, but turned it down because of how Steve allegedly treated Bernie Mac. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. <laughs> Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy, it was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. And that whole story about Steve being homeless? Now, I had learned a lesson when I was homeless. I was good. Right. And I told him, I said, hey, God, I'm, I'm good, you know, I, I got it. I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but trust me, I got it. Kat's calling Cap on that, too, saying Mark was out there touring and making bank with him. This is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. And guess what? It seems like Kat's not the only one with a less than stellar view of Steve Harvey. The whole world might be giving him the side eye. One person wrote, Cat Williams has paid hard for saying things the way they really are. As far as Steve Harvey, Steve has never been funny, but he has been good at playing the role of somebody who is very likable and personable, and people laugh with him because they feel like he is one of them. Nothing could be further from the truth. However, there has always been something off, like the videos showing him dressed up as a Muslim telling people that they need to come into alignment with what sounds like the New World religion, that's kind of Oprah-ish, where the person is being used as a tool of propaganda because people like and trust them. I think Steve is sold out to more than just the industry, but you have to do that if you want to be a leader in the industry, and nobody in the industry is a leader unless they have. Guaranteed that's true. So, Steve's known for his slick storytelling, right? Now, with Samuel L. Jackson hinting at spilling some Steve Harvey tea, it's got us wondering how Steve's gonna wiggle out of this one. Rumors are flying about skeletons in the closet and some shady sacrifices for fame, but what's the truth? 